Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of To The Point Podcast. Uh, it's Thursday here. Um, I hope you guys all enjoy opening night in the NHL. I know I did. Um, obviously, the uh, bubble ended in uh, late September, early October. I saw the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, raise Lord Stanley Cup. And now it's mid-January, and we finally get the 20, uh, 2020 2021 season kicking off here. And um, I couldn't be more excited. Uh, it's it's just good, you know, it's good in the world. You know, obviously there's no fans in the stands, which uh, of course, I mean, it's better when, when there are fans, when you have that energy. I, for one, um, don't really miss them. That's probably an unpopular take. I find the game great. Um, with, without it, I just think that the play stands, stands on its own. Um, something I, I want to touch on off the, off the, off the bat here. Um, in the games last night, I watched Obviously, I was bouncing around. That's kind of my, my thing. I go to different games and um, just what I'm interested in at the moment. And NBC and Sportsnet both had, um, I wanted to see how they were uh, providing the game and how what kind of sound they were using. So um, leave your thoughts in the comments because I'm really interested. What do you guys think of the built-in sound noise? I found the bubble, they weren't doing as much as they're doing now. And again, maybe I'm wrong because I listen to a lot of my games with no sound. Um, and I predominantly last night, I listened with no sound. I just um, put it on for a little bit just to see. But, you know, the big save and like when a two and one and the crowd gets going, I don't, I don't need that. You know, I know there's no fans there. Um, I get it. Maybe it's better for your product, but I don't I don't need that. I'd rather hear. I'd rather hear the bench and hear them, you know, obviously with TV rules, you couldn't put swearing on and things of that nature, but I'd rather hear conversations like that, or you can hear players communicate on the ice. And I think this built in crowd noise really takes away from that. Um, and I think it's an opportunity for the, for the NHL to see players, what they're thinking, how they're communicating on the ice, if they're communicating. Um, I think that's another key factor here. Um, and yeah, this, uh, the crowd noise, obviously it's not going to affect me a lot. Cause like I said, I listen to a lot of my games with no sound. Um, but it's when I do, I like to, I like to, um, I, I, I just like the, the natural product. And if the crowd's there when, when it's normal and there's not a pandemic, then that's fine. But, um, you know, that's obviously it's the NHL choice sports net, uh, NBC, they've chosen to go down a different route, but, I, I just don't think it's, it's the greatest, it's the greatest thing for your product. Um, moving on to the games. Um, the first game of the day, obviously to kick off the season was um, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Um, you know, me and Seamus talked about in the podcast that um, we think that this the East division is the toughest and toughest in hockey. And I don't think um, this game proved, proved otherwise. I think it is. I don't think it's, I think, it goes the East division, like right up here. And then you got the North and then it goes down from there. But the East is so much tougher than the other three divisions. I don't even think it's close and it, it's really unfair to what some of these teams, but you got to roll with the punches is where they're uh, geographically located. And, you know, it's going to be a battle, but it'll also be a lot of fun too. So, um, you know, uh, Pittsburgh, I, you know, everything I'm going to say in this podcast I'm going to make this disclaimer. It's the first game of the season. I've only seen these teams play one game and that's got to be said. That's got to be said for the winning teams and the losing teams, because we'll move on to everybody's favorite team later. And they won last night, but grain of salt, you know, we've seen teams win an opener and then they, they could be great. You know, Tampa Bay won last night. Maybe they repeat, you know, maybe Toronto finally finds or find themselves and they go on, on a playoff deep cup run. But it's one game. So that, that's just a disclaimer off the top from me. Um, and the same thing with, with players, how I say if they don't play well, didn't play well last night. They play, you know, Pittsburgh plays Friday. They can bounce back and play great then. It's all, you know, it, it could all it could all be different. So the big big thing for me for Philadelphia, you know, they're kind of an older team. They struggle to score goals in the bubble, and you know, they scored six last night. Um, their power play was cooking that three goals last night. We also see some, um, their younger players start to produce here. Joel Farabee had four points in the game. 
he looked great on um, new signing. Eric Gustafson had two assists for for Philadelphia. Um, James Van Reems, like you saw two goals on uh, deflections right in front of the net. I think this team needs to do that. I think their defense has to be a huge part of their offense for them to to be as good as they can be. You know, you got Provorov back there, Gustafson. He's an offensive defenseman. Defensively, he's a liability. But when he's got the puck in the power play, when he's got the puck at the point, you know, he's the threat. Um, so use that. Um, I also think, uh, you know, Hague's got more, you know, Philip Myers uh, likes to produce offensively. Sanheim, I think, is a more offensive game than he's shown so far in his NHL career. So, you know, they got they a good decor in Philadelphia. Um, but some good signs. Also, Nolan Patrick, he hasn't played in over a year. It was really good to see him. He scored a goal, the second goal of the game. Um, I think it was quite emotional for him. Obviously, he's been dealing with concussions, concussion issues. Um, I still worry for him. Obviously, he got through one game. I think of Michael Furlan last year. Played one game. I think he got a goal and assist to start the year. By the third or fourth game of the season, he had a concussion. And I don't think he'll ever play again. And Patrick's had multiple. So, obviously, this is going to – be with him his whole career you know you can't avoid every check so a good start for him I, I wish him nothing but the best former you know high, high second overall pick he um he could be an x-factor for philly um as well as oscar Lindblom. you know recovering from from obviously having cancer last year i thought he i thought he looked good last night um he uh looked strong big kid um and but um for pittsburgh you know, their biggest thing this year is goaltending. I think their their biggest issue has been goaltending since Marc-Andre Fleury departed. You know, they had Matt Murray, who was great in the playoffs, hasn't really proved himself as a number one goaltender in the NHL. Tristan Jari, who's played, you know, half a year as a starter, really, but having Matt Murray there as a backdrop. And, um, you know, he was leaking last night. Um, I thought, I didn't think there was many good goaltenders last night, to be fair, to uh, Tristan Jari. I thought a lot of, you know, Carey Price was a uh, wasn't great last night, but um, you know he let in some goals he'd want back. So the two deflections, I can't really put on him. I thought the the fair Fairby's um, one goal again to make it three two was a little bit. He didn't hide his post. He could have covered that one up. Um, but you know the connect knee goal, I thought he should have had back too. But yeah, again Pittsburgh. Their, their biggest will be goaltending and defense. Um, they've, they got some good, they still got Dumoulin, Latang, kind of the inner workings. Mike Matheson, they acquired, who uh, had a rough debut last night. But to be fair to him, he looks rough a lot of nights. Um, took a couple stupid penalties, and that's just, that's his game. You know, and again, they traded him for Patrick Hornquist from the Florida Panthers, but he, He's not a guy that I that I want on my team. I just think he's a loose cannon, and he does he makes too many mistakes for what he brings, which isn't much. Um, Crosby got the score sheet with a power play goal, um, but uh, Pittsburgh and Philly play again Friday. So, like I said, I think Philly uh, Pittsburgh was better five on five last night than Philadelphia. I thought they created more. I like uh, Zucker and Malkin look really good together. Um, I think that will be a good line, Malkin normally likes to play with a heavier winger because he's, he's a heavy center. They can both win puck battles. I think Zucker, you know, he played with a physical edge last night, which would be great if you can add that to his game. Um, but yeah, I like, I, I like that pair for, for um, Pittsburgh, but yeah, the goaltending is going to be the biggest thing for them. Jari and then Casey to Smith behind him. We'll see. Um, Philly Carter Hart wasn't great last night either. Give up, you know, try to clear the puck. Crosby knocked it down, empty nets. That was a poor play from him. But I still think he's one of the better goaltenders in the NHL, so I expect to see him rebound. And um, these two play again on Friday. So we're going to see that a lot this year where uh, teams play back-to-backs. You know, I was looking at the schedule. In a couple weeks, Calgary plays Ottawa three times in four nights. So and they're all in Calgary. With the limit of travel, it's going to happen in the U.S. too, where – teams play each other on back-to-backs three times four nights you know it's it's going to be common so um yeah uh just be ready to see be ready to see um some teams play each other a lot and uh 
embrace it, I guess. That's the best thing because I I'm not I'm not loving it either. Three times in four nights is a lot, but I guess my advice to the people that are like, wow, oh, this team again, you know, go to another station, um, watch a team maybe you, you wouldn't have watched otherwise. Um, you know, last night, St. Louis, Colorado, fantastic game. I watched a lot of that game. Um, and those teams interest me. You know, um, I think you can really enjoy that game. You can really enjoy, like, even if you're a Canadian team, if you root for Toronto, you root for Calgary, what have you, watching St. Louis, Colorado, it's worth it because they're going to be in the playoffs and they're probably going to go farther than your team that you like. That might sound harsh, but um, I just think it's the truth. So, um, so that's just, you know, you don't got to listen to me, but that's just my advice is I like to watch. I like to flip. I like to watch different. You can, you can use the pip window too and go split screen, which is often fun. I know some people um, can't, can't look at both, um, both games at the same time, but that, that's another option for you. Um, but yeah, good, good start for Philly. I expect them to finish um, high in the East division and, you know, a good start for them, uh, you know, and they also won without really Giroux or Voracek making any impact. So it's so a good on Faraby, good on, um, you know, Nolan Patrick and their new additions really um, providing a spark last night for them. Moving on to Montreal and Toronto. So, uh, yeah, this was the first of, of many matchups between these two teams. Obviously, it's still still one of the, the better rivalries in hockey. Um uh, yeah, I think last night it, it brought a little bit back for me. Um, I think the Toronto, you know, back in the day, Toronto, Montreal, Toronto, Buffalo, Toronto, Ottawa, they really had these rivalries. And because, you know, Kyle Dubas had, you know, basically built a team of minions, um, you kind of lost that edge. You lost that spark and you didn't have your Darcy Tucker, you didn't have your Ty Domi. And I'm not even saying fights, having a scrum after the whistle, you know, having a Dennis Malgan on your team, you're not going to have many scrums off the whistle or he's going to be, you know, getting thrown over the boards by, uh, by Josh Anderson. But, um, you know, this game actually had some physical play and I, you know, Toronto for a regular season game last night, probably played more physical than their 10 most physical games last year in the, in the regular season. Um, Cause there were nights where you could make the argument that they didn't throw a check. Obviously, the stat sheet would say yes, because maybe you brush somebody passing them by. But, you know, we look deeper than that here to the point. A, check, a check's a check, not um, you know, somebody falling going to the bench. Um, but to start the game, I was really impressed by both teams with their pace. Um, there wasn't a whistle to the 1450 mark of the first period. Running gun hockey, um, and, and that's a key theme of every game last night. You know, defensive systems are going to be lacking for a while. And the teams that are going to be the best are the teams that can figure it out. You know, usually you have 82 games. So if your first 10, your defensive system suck, you're losing game 6-5, you can figure it out because you have runway. However, this year it's 56, and you're going to have limited practice time, and you're going to have limited days off. You need to figure out your defensive system soon, and both of these teams need to work on it. Um, and... Just defensive, just defensemen being in good positions, not making bad pinches, uh, forwards not trying to jailbreak the zone. I'll talk about that in the Edmonton game. That happened twice. Wingers, wingers aren't held accountable anymore. Now, defensemen are buried, and unfairly, if you ask me, because wingers don't go to their wing and try to help defensemen get the puck out. And then you have people saying, "Well, this defenseman's bad." And then, you know, that, that was the whole Jay Gardner thing. I'm not saying Jay Gardner was uh, Nick, uh, Nick Lidstrom, but how about Mitch Marner? Come back in the zone and help me. Don't be at uh, mid, in the middle of the ice. Let's go here. But it's the, the teams that figure that out. You know, Edmonton is another team that needs to work on that. I'll touch on that, but just getting your defensive systems and your structure in place, the teams that do it the earliest will have the most success. They can get a lead in the point race. And if they play 500 hockey, if they have a great first 15, if you play 500 hockey, the rest of the way, you'll make the playoffs. And that's all you got to do. Get to the dance. There's no, I mean, if you're playing in Winnipeg, there's no fans. If you're playing in, if you're playing at your home rink in Ottawa, there's no fans. What's the difference? 
So, um, it's yeah, just that's the big thing of every game last night is figure out your defensive systems and you got to do it quick. Obviously, it's, again, disclosure, like, like I said at the first, it's the first game. It's the first game. Um, but early, early thoughts, um, I thought TJ Brody had a strong game for Toronto. Um, he's partnered with Morgan Riley. I thought he looked great you know, in his, his least debut. He's, he's not a flashy player. You're not going to hear a lot from him in the media because he's kind of a stoic, kind of a weird guy because he doesn't really enjoy the media. Um, so he he just plays a solid game. I thought he covered up for a couple of bad pinches for Morgan Riley last night. Uh, made a couple good sticks on Suzuki late late in the game to keep the game tied. Um, but you know, early in the game, uh, you get it for the new signings. I thought Brody looked good. I thought it was a terrible game for Zach Bogosian. Two penalties, um, getting beat on puck battles. I mean, that first penalty, the first period, he gets beat in a puck battle. Then he hooks a guy to the ground. You know, you're, you're supposed to be that strong guy, strong defenseman. You can't be getting beat like that. And then worst of all, taking a really bad penalty where, you know, they, he should have got the puck out of his zone. And so that was a frustrating one. You know, another blunder, you know, the Leafs took a too many men on the ice penalty. Jimmy VC hopping over, hopping over the boards when the puck is right near the bench. You got to be aware. And um, he wasn't there, bad penalty. And, you know, Leafs made them pay. Beautiful goal by Nick Suzuki. He's basically at the behind the net, bottom of the goal line. Incredible angle, posting in. I mean, just a phenomenal, phenomenal play by him. And you know, he's a he's a player. Nick Suzuki. There's a couple of guys I'm going to talk about from Montreal who I think are really starting to emerge as dominant players. But Suzuki was traded from Vegas to um, to Montreal for Max Pacioretty. Um, you know, Vegas wants to get rid of Pacioretty now. He's making $7 million a year, not what they'd hoped. Suzuki looks like a number one center to me. Um, he reminds me, he's smaller, but he's going to be more of a Jonathan Taves than, say, a McKinnon. or he may, He's more even a, a Braden Point. He's a 200-foot player that, I mean, he, last night he said to go, Matthews had a 2 on one partial two on one he back checked his ass off got to the puck before Marner could shoot saved a goal he made a couple really key defensive plays where you're just like wow you know and he had a he had a he scored a, a goal and before not the power play another goal for Anderson he goes 200 feet I mean he, he makes a key defensive play goes up the ice finds Anderson scores I mean he he was all over it last night but he made it one nothing um um, another player for Toronto here I'm going to talk about is um, Will Nylander, um, William Nylander. Um, if you hear William Nylander often on this podcast, you probably won't because I like to refer to him as Bill. Um, I uh, That's just personal preference, and uh, I get a lot of satisfaction out of saying Bill Nylander, so for whatever reason. Um, but, you know, it's good to see uh, Bill has some success. Obviously, uh, Leafs Nation would have had him probably playing in Columbus uh, last night if it was up to them. But, you know, a good three-point game for him. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, now that – that's the thing about Twitter. You win one game and you're going to go on a cup run, and now William Nylander, a.k.a. Bill Nylander, is just the, the cream of the crop. And it's so funny to me because – Every Leafs, sorry, not every, because I don't want to put everybody, 85% of Leafs fans are like, Trey Nylander, Trey Nylander, he's the problem, he's the problem. Okay, I know it's one game last night, but he wasn't the problem last year. How about Sheldon Keefe in the playoffs? Don't play him at center. He's a winger. Maybe look at the coach. I don't know. That, that was his decision. Um, maybe don't put Tavares, Marner, and Matthews on one line. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a coach, but if you got a winger playing center and then you bitch about him, but yet the top line went goalless in game five against Columbus. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's just it's kind of weird to me. But anyway, Bill, great game. Uh, great game for him. Three point night last night. I thought he he was all around the puck. Um, yeah, you obviously 
went uh, shot, you know, he got the puck at the point. It was a weird goal because he just kind of, he was at the blue line, just basically just turned around and shot the puck. But Montreal had screened Carey Price. Three players were in his line of vision, went through them all, beat him. And this kind of, Carey Price was pissed, seemed pissed off all night. That, that one got through him. But um, before the end of the period, um, Josh Anderson, 22 seconds left after, after a set play and the faceoff. He finds the puck, posting in, and uh, let's talk about let's talk about Josh Anderson. Um, there's two unicorns in the NHL right now. One's Tom Wilson, and then Tom Wilson, he's he's a good skater, he's a pretty good goal scorer, and he's tough as hell, and he scares majority of the league. Um, he's Nobody wants to deal with him. Uh, he and he's he's got high end skill. You can play top end minutes for your team. That's the difference between him and say Ryan Reeves. Or Reeves is gonna play fourth line. Tom Wilson has played with Ovechkin routinely. Played with Backstrom. He knows how to. He's a top line player. That's Josh Anderson. This guy is the real deal, Holyfield. Um, I love him. I mean, he's he's the second unicorn. He. His skating ability for a guy that size is really uncanny. He's strong. And I think he, you know, he got 27 goals two years ago. He had shoulder surgery last year, only had one goal. If he can stay healthy, the NHL needs to look the fuck out because he, he's so good. And, you know, I like Max Domi a lot, but if Anderson can stay, they signed him to a seven-year extension, which may be risky, but I, I, I like it because I love him as a player. So that's a little bit of bias on my end, I'll admit. But he's he's a player. He's a player. And Montreal really changed the look of their team. Um, you know, Tyler Toffoli had a fantastic game last night. Um, obviously getting a couple points, but just he's the way he looks up, he found, found people – you know, his passes cross ice right tape to tape. I thought he looked really crisp last night. He was also, um, they like to point out on the broadcast, he was a vocal leader on the bench. Um, he, he looked good. But it was 2-1 after one. Um, Montreal made it 3-1 after a beautiful pass from Alexander Romanov. On another power play sprung Thomas Tatar. And he made it 3-1 for, for Montreal, um, beating Anderson five-hole. Anderson didn't have, a, didn't have a great game. I thought he had a, a strong last 10 minutes in overtime um, for, for him. I thought the Tatar goal he should have had. I realized it's a breakaway, but five-hole squeaker, you'd want that one back. The second Josh Anderson goal, he'd want that one back. Um, but um, really a key shift in the game is 3-1, 10-minute mark of the second period, and newcomer for the Leafs, Wayne Simmons, Drops the mitts, drops the gloves, and he goes toe to toe with Ben Sherratt. Two tough customers, um, and uh, not a great scrap, but it it did something. There's no fans. He went. Out, he sent a loud, you know, he vocalized to the bench like "Let's go," and it gave them a spark. Um, you know, uh, Montreal started taking penalties, and they were really yeah, they were bad. They started taking penalty penalty after penalty and um, make it three, two bill Nylanders scores again, second of the game goes over the, uh, over the glove of Kerry price. And then right after that, Suzuki takes a holding penalty, which I thought was questionable. Um, but then Shea Weber gets a delay game. No question there, right over the glass. And before the period's over, John Tavares tips in a shot three, three. And this really shifted the game. I think the fight gave them some momentum, but Montreal getting undisciplined and careless really cost them this game tonight. Um, the Suzuki, I don't think that holding like that was kind of a ticky tack call, but Weber's that's going to, that's going to get called. And, you know, five on three, Toronto's going to score on it every time. And they have too much skill. I mean, they went two for three in the power play in the period. Both teams power play looked very good. If you ask me, um, I, I liked Toronto, their setup. I don't think that'll be their power play all year with Simmons and Thornton on the top, top line. Cause you know, Nylander scored at the tail end of a power play with the second unit. And that's another thing for teams. Um, 
playing a power play one minute and then having a second one that's just as strong go up for another minute doesn't work to me. Load up your power play and play them for a minute and a half. Because guess what? Washington's done that for years, and they're always in the top 10 in power play. Because guess what? Ovechkin doesn't come off. And Backstrom and those guys, they stay out till minute and 30, and then they'll go change. But switching with a minute, you know, that line, what if they have great momentum, and it hits the post, and they clear it quick? Go get the puck and go again. Not, oh, okay, well, it's one minute. Okay, we have to change. This, you know, it's robotic. Um, and I, I don't think that'll be the power play forever with Simmons and Thornton on it together for, for Toronto. But, you know, it worked last night. So 3-3 three, three after, after two, and this a really a nightmare last three, four minutes for Montreal just with penalties and just, just a disaster. Um, so mentioned Josh Anderson, you know, the face-off in the Montreal zone, they win it, they break out. Um, a D kind of got caught. So Tavares is basically playing defense against Josh Anderson. And he's trying to stick with him because he's skating forward, but it, it was no match. Josh Anderson blew by him. Tavares wasn't strong enough. He wasn't fast enough to take the puck from him. Takes it to the net, protected it beautifully, got a shot, goes off the right shoulder and squeaked over the line again. I won't go over him. I won't say too much more good things about Josh Anderson, but he's him and Suzuki should play together. They're a dangerous, dangerous pair. And um, they're just a deadly combination uh, on the ice. Um, but, you know, eight minutes left, Toronto catches a break. Um, and I'm sure a lot of Leafs fans were like, you know, we've been waiting to catch a break. So you got it here. You know, four, not like I said, eight minutes left. Drouin trying to clear the puck. The ref's wrong place, wrong time. It hits him, bounces to the front of the net. Nylander finds Jimmy VC, who puts it in the empty net. 4-4. Four, four. Um, that happens. You know, it happens where it hits a stanchion, bounces. It's no different here. Um, you know, for anybody, any Montreal fan that said they got screwed, well, that happens all the time in hockey, and you got to roll through it. Um, you know, if it, if it hits a stanchion, and it rolls in front. That's the same thing as hitting the linesman here. Um, obviously, I think Drouin might have a different opinion this morning, but um, you know, good on Toronto. They they capitalized and they took they took advantage of it. Um, I never mentioned Austin Matthews yet. Um, first period, I thought he was not great uh, and really kind of like Casper. Last 40 minutes, he was, he was, if he wasn't the best player on the ice, he was real close to it. Um, I thought he was all around the net. He got a lot of scoring opportunities and he's, you know, he's, I got to give him credit. He's improved his game a lot in the last year and a half. Um, I thought for a while there, he was getting really overhyped as a player, um, basically by the least nation and you know, TSN and Sportsnet. Um, but from the, even the bubble last year in those five games, you know, he was, Toronto's best player by a country mile. And I think he's playing good hockey. You know, I mentioned the first period wasn't his best. He was kind of not as crisp as um, he normally is, but good, good on him. I thought he played very well last night. Um, obviously he didn't score a goal. So he was, he'd scored in four straight season openers, but he was around the puck. He, he was a difference maker. He, you got to, the Montreal was on their toes every time he's on the ice. He had a crossbar. So good start for him. Um, I didn't think Marner played particularly well last night. He just looked a little weird to me. Um, but I, I I wouldn't play Marner and Matthews together the whole year. Um, I ch change it up a little bit with the lines. Um, I think the Toronto team has a lot of faith that Jimmy VC is going to be the player that he was at Harvard. Well, he was great in NCAA when the Hobie Baker, but he has not been – a top six forward in the NHL. I mean, that's just fact. That's not conjecture. Um, and I think they're banking on him doing it here. I wouldn't hold my breath. That's all I'm saying. So uh, we get to the end of the game. Nobody can beat Price or Anderson. It goes to overtime. And it was a frantic, great overtime. You know, three on three hockey is fantastic. And my worry, my, my only worry heading into overtimes every time is, oh my, oh, this is going to go to the gimmick otherwise known as the shootout. I call it the gimmick because I hate it. I, if I had to remove one thing from the game of hockey, uh, now this is, would it be video replay or would it be a shootout? Uh, 
That's a tough one. If I had a gun in my head, I'd really have to think about it. But I hate them both equally. Um, but yeah, my, my, my worry every time is, okay, it's going to be a great overtime. It's great action. But it's like score. It's like scoring four touchdowns and losing the game. It's empty calories. So if it's a great overtime, you get to a shootout. It's done. You forget about the great overtime. She said to watch that boring ass slog shootout, which I flip every time now. That's something I probably shouldn't do. But yeah, every time there's a shootout, I get off it. Um, so, but thankfully, last night we didn't have that. Um, lo- first great opportunity was Philip Dunnell. He was out there for over a minute, three on three. He got a breakaway pass. He was dead. His shot that he got in Anderson really wasn't a shot. It was like a little fluttering butterfly going to the net, and Anderson just swatted it away. He was dead tired. Um, McKayev got a really good opportunity. He's high slot. Puck, puck was dropped to him. Price robbed him. It looked like that was going to be the game winner. It robbed him. Um but uh, the game ultimately ended with Paul Byron going up the wing. He got stripped of the puck. He's dead tired. Puck goes to Tavares. He's on a two on one with Riley. Finds him. Riley puts it away. Toronto Maple Leafs win their win their home opener. Win the the opener of the season. Um, I thought they were better five on five than Montreal slightly. Um, I thought Freddie Anderson was shaky at best, and I, I thought Carey Price was shaky at best too. Um, I like Brody's game. Bogosian struggled. Um, Muzzin and Hall were fine. Riley, he's okay. And obviously got the game winner, so that helps him uh, with with a puff piece there. But you know they, they had some good things in this game. I, I like their toughness. Like I guess I like Matthew's game. Um, I thought Mikheyev, after having injuries last year, I thought he he came out and and played well last night. But um, like I said this is one game. For Montreal and Toronto, I think Montreal gave the game away more than Toronto won the game. But the penalties, not with the the bad break, just the penalties at the end of the second period, that was just a meltdown. Um, But, you know, Toronto gets the two points and, uh, you know, good on them to to win their opener against a really good team. And uh, I think every game these two teams play will will be very good. And I expect both of them to be in the playoffs at at the end of the year. Pivoting, uh, I'll talk just briefly about this game because it really wasn't close, and um, maybe that's the bigger story. Uh, Tampa Bay and Chicago. Tampa Bay won 5 1. That's no surprise. Chicago, it's without Jonathan Taze, Alex Nylander, Kirby Doc, you know, three top three centers, really. But the bigger deal for Tampa, you win 5 1, Kucherov's out um, all year, but it didn't matter because they got their team back. Kucherov's on injured reserve. But you got to re-sign Sergachev. You got to re-sign Anthony Sorelli. You got to re-sign Eric Chernak. You have the same nucleus that won you a Stanley Cup last year. And their team looks fantastic. I mean, Braden Point last night, I think he was ranked 10th on TSN's top 50 players list, which um, I recommend you go check out. Um, Yeah, I had some some real issues with it. which I normally do with, with these lists, but um, he, he, he should have been higher than 10th. In my opinion, Braden point is he's a star. I mean, he, what he did for Tampa Bay last year, I mean, how you quantify that when it comes to a regular season, I think that's the toughest thing when you rank these players. It's well, the list supposed to be the top 50 players at the end of the year. Well, I put Braden point higher than a lot of players because I expect him to be playing late in the year. Um, when some of these guys are golfing. So Tampa just looks, they still got Hedman. They still got point. They got Vasilevsky. Stamkos had two points last night, goal and assist, both on the power play. Um, and they still have that team, that team that you fear. Uh, they had a, you know, Matthew Joseph scored last night. He didn't play. He was a black ace in the playoffs. So, you know, they're, it's going to be a tough year for Chicago. I think that was the more clear thing for me. Um, you know, they had Malcolm Subban starting their, their opener. They got Colin Delia and Kevin Lankin in behind him. It's, it's tough sledding right now for Chicago. Um, luckily Detroit's in the division, so I don't see them finishing dead last, but Tampa Bay should have their way with this division. You know, really Dallas, Colorado, uh, sort of Dallas, uh, Carolina, Columbus, really their only competition. 
and you know they're all secondary competition compared to Tampa Bay. So, um, you know they got to raise their banner last night, um, celebrate their championship, but um, they're just picking up where they left off, and I, I don't think they're satisfied yet. You know, John Cooper last year became the winningest coach in Tampa Bay Lightning history. It's his ninth season behind the bench, and I think he sees this team as a core group that can win multiple Stanley Cups. And we saw uh, Chicago win three in, in the 2010s. LA won two. Obviously, Pittsburgh won back to back. I think Tampa Bay. To come, I saw the odds yesterday. Colorado is the odds-on favorite to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, Tampa had the third best odds behind Colorado and Vegas. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, Tampa Bay really hasn't gotten worse. Obviously, Kucherov's out, but he's going to be back for the playoffs. They still have – I mentioned all the players they have. I mean, they're my cup favorite right now. Until somebody proves otherwise, uh, look out for Tampa Bay. But, yeah. Um, Blues Avalanche. I mentioned games that maybe you wouldn't watch all the time because maybe you root for a Canadian team or, you know, they on, they're on a little bit later or, you know – Normally, like last night, it was later because it was the NBC it was a triple header. So it's opening night. They like to spread out the games. And usually the Blues, even Colorado play, at, you know, nine, 10 o'clock. So you can catch a period or two before, before you go to Snoozeville. But um, it was an impressive game for the Blues last night. They really, they came out to play. And I think they made, it, made an opening night statement. Um, Jordan Bennington looked sharp. They really neutralized Nathan McKinnon last night. Ranton in that top line didn't didn't shine a lot on the ice. Um, and the blues won, you know, beating Colorado scoring with their depth, um, two goals by Oscar Sundquist, who's a third, fourth liner. They got a, a goal from Kyle Clifford, the new addition, who's a fourth line right winger. And then Jordan Cairo, uh, a younger playing third line right now. Um, you might remember him playing at the world junior hockey championships. He's a player they hope can develop into a top six role. Um, he's had some injury problems and hasn't really gotten the opportunity, but it's impressive to me that, you know, they win this game, not from the likes of O'Reilly really playing well, uh, or David Perron for that matter, guys like that to, to shine. And I thought their decor looked good. Um, Pareko was strong. Bennington was, was solid in the net. Um, Colorado still their biggest issue is goaltending. Um, you know, uh, Grubauer is good, but he's not a starter. He's not a Stanley Cup winning goaltender. I mentioned Colorado has the best odds to win the Stanley Cup. You need to upgrade that position. Whether this is just an opening night, this is not opening night overreaction. I mean, it's been like this for a long time. And to, they need to, I think they can wait into the middle of the season and maybe some teams that expected to go far maybe will dip. And then you can try to pounce and um, get some assets at the trade deadline you get an asset net but for them to win a stanley cup they need an upgrade at the goalie position and i don't i don't know who that is yet i think like i said i'm gonna wait and see what teams kind of kind of hit the mud here kind of struggle i would say maybe in vancouver but hopi and demco they're gonna want to keep them both because then they'll both be eligible for the Seattle expansion draft where you could Seattle could take Holpe um, or Demko and Vancouver's left with, with the, with the latter. So um, it's going to be tough for Colorado with the salary cap and everything to navigate that deal. But Joe Sackick has got to know that he's got the team right now to win a cup and he needs to go get a goaltender to, to really solidify that. And uh, make his team even more confident because I still think some of them are tentative. Cause you look back there, you got Grubauer and Pavel Francouz, who's his backup. And you're like, Ugh. okay, if we, if we get caught here, it's in the back of the net. If it's a two on one, it's in the back of the net every time, you know, other teams don't have that worry. So just something to look out for for Colorado. I think they need to upgrade that goalie position. Um, Last game to talk about today, Vancouver at Edmonton. Um, this was kind of a weird game. The first period didn't have a whole lot of, whole lot of pace, whole lot of energy to it. Um, really sloppy. Uh, I thought Koskinen in, in, for, in goal for Edmonton started the game really sharp and 
as the game went along, he only got worse and worse. Obviously, it was Brayton Holtby last night against um, Koskinen in net, in net for Edmonton, but I was kind of surprised that like, Thatcher Demko would start the opener, but they go with the new addition, Holtby, more the, the veteran in net. Um, but my big theme to tonight was Connor McDavid. I, I thought he played terrible. Um, the first goal, first goal of the game, the puck's on the half wall just inside the Edmonton zone. Tanner Pearson throws the puck to Horvat. Horvat puts um, basically on the goal line, puts it home behind costing it. Well, no D was around him because they both went to the puck carrier, which was terrible defensive systems. But also McDavid was at center ice gliding. Horvat's your man. Get your ass back. That was 100% his fault, that goal. You could say the defense should have been there. They both should have went to the puck, which I agree. But your center, your job is to, your man is the center. You have to get back and, and defend him. And he didn't. He glided and glided and glided. And then Horvat taps it home. And for Edmonton to be a legitimate threat, and they say, well, it's kind of like Toronto. They always say you gotta you gotta dig in, you gotta buy in, you know, the Mike back up Mike Babcock thing. Well, you need to you need to buy in, Connor, Dreisaitl, because I'm gonna point out another bad play by Dreisaitl on this game that led to a goal. I get it that you guys are big point producers, but your D is not good enough and your goaltending is not good enough. You're not going to win 6-5 in the playoffs. Playing 200 feet and maybe eliminating 20, 15, 10 to 15 points each is worth it if you win. And you're not going to win playing the way you did last year. You lost to Chicago in the return to play qualifying round. That You played Vancouver last night who – is worse than last season, but they beat you just because I think they outworked you and you made some stupid, stupid mistakes last night. And that was just one of them. That was really obvious to me. And the funny thing is they didn't even mention on the telecast. Like David's just floating back there and calling his girlfriend or whatever he's doing. Get your ass back. It was just a lazy play, flat out. Um, Second period, you know, his offensive game started to wake up. I, I still think he didn't play great last night. Um, but who did play great last night was Bo Horvat. His line was really cooking. Um, for for Vancouver, I'll mention another goal they scored. But um, a guy who I thought played well last night for the Oilers was Kyler Yam Yamamoto. Sorry, he um, he plays with Drysaddle and Dominic Cahoon, new addition from the Buffalo, Buffalo Sabers, and. Um, you know, he, he strips Ole Levy, the rookie defenseman for the Canucks. Dry Soto picks a puck up, fires a puck across the ice. Yamamoto, top shelf, tied 1-1. One, one. Um, Ewell Levy's a prospect for Vancouver that they've been waiting on for a long time here, hoping that he'll he'll click. Um, one game, you know, it's still, you know, returns, you need to give him, I think you need to at least play him 8-10 to 10 games. I get it, it's 56. But I don't think he looked great last night. I think he looks a little slow. Um, but we'll see. I, I, I don't think what again, one game is not that's not your career, one game. So, you know, like McDavid could back check. Uh, they play each other tonight. You know, Vancouver and Edmonton play each other again tonight. So there's maybe he'll make a great play um back check on Horvat tonight. But last night just wasn't there. Um Second period, I get still second period, um, 241 left in the period. Horvat line strikes again. Horvat gets the puck down to Pearson. P Pearson gets a shot. And rookie Niels Hoglander gets the net, pounds in the rebound, 2-1 Vancouver. First NHL goal for Hoglander. Uh, he's, he, uh, he's a young Swede, a small guy, but um, he fits in well with that line. Uh, he's got some skill. He's got some creativity um, below, below the uh, goal line. I think he... He sees the ice really well, um, creative player, but uh, good to see him. Obviously, getting he won the, the job out of camp to, to play here, and he's playing with Horvat, Tanner Pearson, two guys with, with good experience, and um, he uh, found the back of the net there. Um, third period, uh, real 10, 10 seconds of the period. Uh, the draws one, it's a tail end of a power play for Edmonton. Zach Cassian's coming down the right, right side. He's looking at the net, does a no-look pass back to uh, Darnell Nurse. Nurse makes no mistake, 2-2. Two, two. Beautiful play by Cassian, nice shot by Nurse, and um, obviously tie game. But less than two minutes later, 
Uh, you got the Vancouver third line out there. It's kind of a broken play. Roussel has this choppy pass, goes in the middle of the eight. Ice, sorry. Gadette gets a shot, kind of flutters, gets over Koskinen. Koskinen, I get it. It's tough. It's kind of a rolling puck, but you had to have that save. Um, it's, I think you had to have that one because it really shifted the rest of the game. Um, it, I, it was, t- I liked the, the depth of um, Vancouver in this game more than Edmonton, which still worries me about Edmonton with their, with their bottom six forwards and what they're going to add. But not too long after, I mentioned Connor's bad um, defensive play. You know, Dry Seidel, he's on the boards. So he thinks the puck's going to get sprung out of the zone. So he kind of goes on this, you know, a jailbreak. I like to call it. He's going up the ice, thinking it's going to be a breakaway, possibly a two on one. Tyler Myers keeps the puck in. Edmonton's got th- three a, a defensemen, two players up. The D man's out of position on the other side. Um, Prague Besser gets the puck. He's basically alone, gets a shot, scores. 4 2. Adam Larson would make it 4 3, but Besser scored again to make it 5 3, and, and that was curtains for the Edmonton Oilers. So the biggest thing is just buy in from their stars on defensive play. Um, just you need to see more from them. And um, you didn't tonight. Uh, 200, I'm not saying you have to play goal line to goal line and be, you know, defensive stalwarts, but be consistent with your effort. And I think your team, the team success will follow that. And I just didn't see that opening night from Edmonton. I thought it was too, too often. It was just um, lazy play after lazy play. And but again, the two play each other tonight and this was one game. So we'll see you know, for these two teams, what kind of effort they have in a back-to-back um, this early in the season. But those are the games last night. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be talking more about the NHL, also the NBA, kind of going through a – tomorrow morning, I'm going to start doing this more and more often, kind of a, a sports center ish where I, I talk about all the sports kind of in one. Uh, I'll talk about, you know, obviously tomorrow I'm going to be talking about the James Harden trade to the Brooklyn Nets, you know, Kyrie Irving out partying where, when he should be playing or, you know, doing whatever he's doing, reading Bibles or whatever he's doing with on video. Um uh, that'll be on tomorrow. We'll talk about the games tonight, but um, a couple games that I have my eyes, I have my eyes on tonight. Um, first, Winnipeg and Calgary. Um, I have my eyes on this game because I think Winnipeg is the best team in the North, and I want to see how they come out and play. I also like watching Calgary games because Matthew Kachuk is my favorite player in the NHL. Um, he's he's getting right up there with Anderson and Wilson for a unicorn to me. I still think he's got a little too much skill. I think he's too skilled to be a unicorn because I think Anderson with his body type and Wilson's body type, you know, they just kind of, they breed that the old school forward, but have that speed and have the, the skill to do it. But he's, he's fun to watch. I think he's quite possibly the most hated player in the NHL, which makes me like him even more. So, but um, I want to see how Shifley, you know, obviously he was hurt in the bubble, how he comes back from his injury Hellebuck coming off of Vesna a year, how he comes out on opening night. How the new decor looks for Calgary. Calgary, uh, Goudreau, Monaghan, this is this is really it for them. Uh, this is your year. You know, it's going to be blown up. Probably Brad Tree Living will be fired if they have a bad season. So Calgary's got a lot of pressure to produce here and produce quick because they don't have a lot of runway. And I don't think um, their ownership is just going to sit by and let this happen much longer. Another game for way different reasons, Washington at Buffalo. Um, Washington at Buffalo, obviously doesn't sound the most sexy game, but it's Sedano Charles' debut in Washington. Taylor Hall's debut in, in Buffalo. Um, I want to see how uh, Eichel and um, and Taylor Hall mesh, um, how, they, how they play together. Uh, I want to see how, how much ice time Big Z gets tonight for Washington, what kind of impact he has, and just how weird it's going to look with to see him in, in a jersey that's not that's not Boston, um, but uh, those are two games that I I really have pegged for me tonight. Uh, I like, like I said, I, I I like to flip through games, so I definitely those won't be the only two games I'm watching. But um, rest assured, on to the point here, I I think I read yesterday is like 160 straight days of hockey or something, 130 something whatever. Um, we're gonna talk about it day in day out here on to the point and um 
if you have teams that you're really interested in or you want to hear more about because you can't watch them, um, just let me know in the comments. I'll watch I'll watch the the game and I'll give you a little progress report on the team. Um, you know, it could be anybody. Columbus, you know, Columbus is a team I actually enjoy watching because Seth Jones I think is unbelievable. So, so if you have teams that you don't get or you don't have NHL center ice, um, let me know. I'll, I'll watch the game. I'll talk about them on the podcast. I want to include every team I can. Um, I, like I said, this podcast. If you want this, the content's not just going to be about, you know, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Canadian teams. Um, that's, that's never been my mantra as a person. The NHL has so many good teams. The leagues have so many, you don't have to talk about the Dallas Cowboys trying to make place every day ad nauseum. Um, we're going to talk about different teams, different players that really are taking over the NHL as a whole and um, I have a lot of fun doing it. So thank you guys for, for tuning in today. Um, I'll say it now tomorrow. I'll be doing a podcast tomorrow morning. I think I'll be doing a, an NFL one at some point tomorrow. And also I, I teased it beginning of the week, um, Friday, uh, four, tomorrow, four o'clock, me and um, my buddy Sawyer Hannah are going to be talking about the office. Um, we'll talk about their characters, some key episodes, and, you know, we're both fanatics of the show. Um, and we're just going to talk about, talk about it. I think a lot of it's just going to be about the joy we have from it and, how these characters really relate to today's world. That's something I, I want to talk to them about. Um, so uh, tune in, get ready for that because I'm sure we'll have a lot of laughs. We'll likely disagree because me and Sawyer don't agree on much, but um, it should be a lot of fun. He's, he's uh, one of my favorite people and happy that he's going to hop on here with me. Um, but uh, that's it for today. Um, like I said, I'll be talking to you guys tomorrow. So stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, we'll talk soon.